Today, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step guide on how to put this TF-65 in the stock Westie cabinets. Let's get started. So why after all these years of using the ARB fridge do we decide to go with a cabinet style truck fridge? Well, mostly with the kids not traveling with us as much, we didn't need the extra space of the 83 quart ARB. We decided still to go with a bigger truck fridge and not the TF-49, which fits in the cabinets, no, no problem at all. We still wanted something a little bit bigger for longer off-grid travel. So we went with the TF-65. It will be a bit more work to put in the cabinets, but we think it'll be worth it. So this won't be a walkthrough on how to get the cabinet out. The Bentley manual does a pretty good job of explaining that. Um, but you definitely need to disconnect your propane, your water lines, and your power to your, for your sink underneath there. So we've done that already. Ours is already out. Um, and we've also cleaned the cabinets out. So to take them out, there's three bolts to hold these two cabinets together. Um, there's a bracket holding against the wall. And then in front of this cabinet, there's a, a bolt on the floor that holds it together. So we're going to take that out real quick. Okay, just like that, the cabinet should be loose. So the issue with the TF-65 is that it's wider than this cabinet is here. It's 17 and really 17 and three quarter inches wide or so that has to fit in this opening. Well, this opening is only just about 17. So this center divider here, we need to remove and move over three quarters of an inch. Well, to do that, as you can see, that's gonna mess up this, this front face here. So we have to carefully take everything apart and take on the table saw and cut a quarter inch off this side and a half inch off this side. That way the drawer stays fairly well centered for the sink cutout. And that's really the tough part with the TF-65 is the, is the width. Uh, the nice part really though is it is a bit shorter and will give us some room to put a nice drawer down here. We'll give us some more storage space that we're gonna lose from here. So we've had this Go Westy fridge elimination kit the whole time, which has been awesome for storage. We put all of our pots and pans, all of our food in here. We're gonna lose all this, so we have to make up for that somewhere. In order to make this easier to disassemble and keep it in one piece, we're gonna take the lid off, this off, just so we can have it lighter to work with. We don't ruin anything. Might as well take it apart. We always look for problems with it as well, too. Okay, to take the stove face off, we have to pop the Burners off. Like that. I'm gonna loosen up in there too. Okay. I found that. There's a screw here, um, a screw over here, and then up underneath, there's this tiny screw there and a tiny screw there. And then the bottom should pry out. There we go. And this part, a little sketchy. You just kind of have to bend it out past these knobs. Okay. Give it a few whacks up. It should come up. Depends how sticky yours is. If you have food up there. There you go. You won't be using this door frame anymore, so now we're gonna remove it as well. Pop off the screw head covers. I'm trying to lose them, even though we won't use them again. They're 
Nice to have around. There you go. There's a little dado on this side that kind of pops out, so don't pull it straight out. Get this side out and kind of wedge it out. Here's the floor that we need to remove. So what we're going to do is take a spreader clamp and put pressure on these joints here while we give it a light tap with a with a dead blow mallet so we can get that bottom to pop out. While we're filming, Mr. FedEx came and dropped something off for us. Let's check out what it is. Hard to see in there, but that's Folkstone Gray Laminate. It's gonna be part of this project. This there. Give us a few taps. Oh, that was a little bit more pressure. There we go. This one broke free a little bit. There it is, starting to separate right there. So now you need to do that one, and then that one over there, and then we'll have the bottom off. So this whole bottom part's off, it's stuck here in this corner, what makes this door Starting to get a little bit of a crack right there, so I don't want to push that too much. Okay, so this side has come off. You can see this part separated. This part here, I'm a little worried about. If I start to pivot this down this way, I'm afraid it's going to just split right there. I've got to find a way to get that out without damaging it more than I have to. Okay, we stood it up a bit, let me get a little better. Hang on, we're still trying to get this here out. There we go. It's off. As you can see, we lost a little bit of wood, but not bad. Not bad at all. There's the dado up there, you can kind of see. So now we can try to get this divider out, which we should be able to tap up this way and then pull out of there. And that leaves that door, which is the one, of course, that we have to cut when we're done. I was gonna try and avoid doing this, I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna take the stainless steel stove top and sink out. Fix that with some glue. Okay. That's out. Still working on this one piece. It's starting to come though, finally. I think we snapped it at that dado right there. Oh. Glue that back up. Yeah. It's okay. I think we can glue that up. That sucks.
out. I think we might have. Well, it'll probably be fine once we glue it back all in together. But there's your center divider. This is what's all going to come move over to make room for this fridge. Now we still have to get this door out. This is starting to pop up. Looks like a little here now. Just have this to come out. I'd like to leave this in if I can and then just put a new dado in, flip it over, use a skill saw, put a new dado in versus taking this whole thing apart. Maybe it might be easier to take it apart, I don't know. <laughs> pretty, pretty close. That laminate there is starting to come out, which we don't want. As a piece, we're going to keep this edge we don't care as much about, we're gonna cut it off. So I chipped that a little bit, that's okay. Oh, look at that. We got it out. Not much left of our cabinet. This against here. Back it up just a little bit. A little bit of room to get the fridge in and out. Make a little mark. Find our line. So, so, right at 18 inches. The old line was right at 17 and a, just quarter. So it's about three quarter inches over. So since that fridge is 17 and five eighths or so, we're gonna put a mark at 17 and three, uh, 17 and seven eighths here. Okay, so that should be our quarter inch dado that is so this way, seven eighths of an inch over the original. There's original side, there's seven eighths. So perfect. Well, my table saw is not perfect. It's not a very good one. And this uh, cross-cut guide is maybe even worse, so we'll see how well we do here. Well, as you can see, that didn't turn out great. I could not keep that board straight so my dado is a bit wide put the, the board in it fits obviously it's going to <laughs> but it's a little bit a little bit loose but maybe this one get some gorilla glue a couple extra staples Well, we got a straighter cut in the, in the table saw. Well, there it is. It fits. Obviously, it's not going to go on the bottom, it'll go up top, but for width wise, definitely close. A quick test fit with the front panel back in. Make sure it's not messing up too bad. You can see here, there's the part we have to cut out. And the fridge will go there, but there's this lip here now that we have to take care of, which will be about a quarter inch off this side, a half inch off this side. That way the drawer doesn't get shifted too far over, hits the sink. We're using a Diablo Ultra Finish 80 tooth to cut the laminate.
got this table saw set up to cut this dado back a quarter inch on the outside of the cabinet, so the right of the cabinet as you're looking at it. So I'm going to cut it at the depth of that dado, which is really tiny, and over on that mark there, which is a quarter inch from the inside of the cabinet, um, not from the outside dado part. So we'll cut the inside and outside first, and then we'll rip the dado down a quarter inch when we're done. So I'm going to cut the front dado now, which is probably the most important because you'll see it. Um, so I've taped up the front so this won't scratch it all. Um, more up our, our laminate already. So everything's set. So here's the initial fit up after cutting. Not great. For one, I'm not a very great woodworker. My tools aren't that great, but also taking this 30 year old cabinet apart doesn't want to go back to the same. But I think I can make that work. So now I'm going to take and cut the same that off, a little over a quarter inch, what I'm taking off this, off this side, so I can test fit the drawer with the sink to make sure I'm not going to have problems when I then start to mark up and cut this side. Okay, day two. You didn't think I was going to get this done in one day, did you? No. We're going to cut the panel on the left side now, the last like forward-facing cut on the laminate. So we're going to measure a bunch. We're going to do some dry fitting to make sure we're going to cut this in the right spot. It mostly just has to be flush with this side of the cabinet here. So right now you see a little bit of overhang. We need to cut this flush with this panel because the fridge goes in right there. Final dry fit seems to work pretty well. It's all nice and tight. It's tight in there. And then you can see in there, it's pretty snug. The piece is cut. See it back there. But there's our final clearance. Um, the drawer slides nice and smooth. Well, smooth as a stock one did. So two other things, you're going to have to bend this propane line a little bit. I bent mine backwards, back behind it a little bit, and then out so it clears the drawer as well. Then you have to bend your propane line that comes up the wall. You also need to cut a hole in this divider panel. As you can see, I put a mark where I'm going to cut mine. Just use a hole saw and cut a half moon out of that. So your propane line can come up. I mean, with that one, you'll have to kind of rebend. One thing, well, two things I guess we need to do is the outlet that was in the wall of the cabinet, the divider, needs to be moved onto the back wall somewhere. So I'll put the cabinet back in and kind of mark out where I want to put that. And also, if you still use your city water connection, you need to take it out or swap it with the electrical connection in the middle because it sticks out too far for the fridge. I just spent about 20 minutes cleaning out all the old dado grooves um, that were on the cabinet. I wasn't getting a great fit on, on some of those, so you don't want to have that problem when you go to glue it up. So I spent the time now. We're going to use some tight bond glue and get this done. We're going to run a little test. We have the fridge hooked up. We're going to turn the power on and check what the decibel level is with the stock fan um, that cools the, the, the condenser off. I have purchased a separate fan that's a much says it's a quieter decibel level fan with the same CFM. So we're going to swap that fan out in there and see what the decibel reading is after that. See, see where it's sitting about. We'll be quiet for a sec. Around 40 to 42. So I'm going to turn the fridge on. Okay, here we go with the Silent X fan. Turn the fridge on.
Well, there we go. There's the test fit. Super happy. It is. It fits snug. You can't even tell the cabinet was modified at all. I am not a woodworker, but I'm pretty surprised at how well that turned out. So now we got to pull the fridge back out, mark where the brackets will go, um, the aluminum angle brackets will, the fridge will sit on, um, run the wiring for the fridge, and kind of put the cabin back together. Instead of a full floor to sit on, we're going to use this quarter inch, or not quarter inch, eighth inch by one angle iron. We'll cut to 16 inches long and it'll screw to the sides of the cabinet. Okay. Rails are done and mounted. I did make a mistake. See there, I didn't account for the fridge hinges that stick out underneath the door supports. And when I slid the fridge in, it hit right here. So I had to take them back out and notch it. So if you're doing that, just be aware of those fringe, those hinge supports underneath uh, will hit those first. On this side also, I decided to through bolt them because this side of the panel is a bit thinner. I couldn't get a good grab with the screws, so I through bolted it. So now it's totally secure. In order to get this black uh, face panel out to put the Formica in, we had to come down on the hinge side and those four screws um, we need to take out a couple and then let the, leave the last one and kind of let the hinge hang, hang down and we can pop the door off of the front of the fridge. That. Take the bottom of the fridge door and you'll see this little gap right here. About two grooves back, you can't see, there's a little line. If you get this kind of pushed in there and kind of work it, this here will pop out. Like that. We unscrewed the hinge and now this should just slide right out. And we'll use this as our template to cut the Folkestone gray laminate. So you want to gently score it first. See a nice straight line. And then increasing pressure as you cut through, specifically once you cut the hard mica top, the backing cut's pretty easy. Do a test fit. That side in there. There you go. Now you have Folkestone gray cabinet or a fridge door. We drill the holes for the hinges and we'll be done. The cabinet is all put back together. Next step is we're going to build a drawer for underneath the fridge. Time to build a drawer. I'm not gonna go through a whole step-by-step -step guide how to build a drawer because I don't know how to do it. I have never built a drawer before. Um, we end up getting these 14 inch uh, ball bearing soft close slides. They'll go on here. We also want the drawer to look as stock as possible. So I'm gonna try and make it the round shape with the, um, with the gray, I guess, you know, trim on it but I don't want it to be round because I lose all that extra space in the drawer. So I've got some ideas on that. I'm not sure it's gonna work out, but we're gonna give it a shot. We have our general box frame built and kind of spaced out. It's gonna be about a half inch above this. So we put the cabinet back in. If we have a rug in there, which we probably will, we'll be able to open the drawer and not interfere with the rug. So I'm gonna get the slides, I think, mounted up now. Get that drawer to come in and out. So you can see I have my drawer kind of match. It's pretty close. It's a little bit narrower because it has to be. So this will go on the front 
and kind of see what we're going to be doing. I've got a latch. I'm going to laminate that piece right now. And then the front of the drawer will be to look like that drawer all flush mount, but the whole thing will open full width. That way we can maximize our storage space. Here we go. Perfect fit. Now comes a part I've been kind of dreading for some reason, which is securing the fridge. We're gonna, since we don't have the flange in the front anymore, we're gonna take a small sheet metal screw and we're gonna drill into the side of the wood and we're gonna insert that um, two on each side. So you can see what we did is we made this. A little tiny miniature drawer front. It's not perfect. It even has the factory gap at the bottom. With I could not get that to line up. Um, it's got a latch and stuff. What it's going to do, it's going to go in here, a little clean up, and kind of sit flush in the front of this drawer. And it'll be kind of a false front. It'll look like the stock one, but it'll be the full width. And then, so we're going to cut this a little bit bigger so that fits in. We're going to laminate this front and trim it. We'll put this inside, put the drawer in. It'll look like a stock roundish drawer, but with the full benefits of the full width drawer. That's what the drawer looks like in place. Looks pretty stock. But then, come over, open it up, and you've got a full width drawer instead of the tiny one. Okay, this project is done. We finished painting the drawer last night, put everything back together. I'm super happy how it turned out. We've got the factory looking drawers, the factory looking front of the fridge with the laminate. It was a bit scary taking the old cabinet apart. I thought for sure something was gonna break or snap. I was gonna have to rebuild it, but it, it did come apart. Again, I'm no woodworker. I don't pretend to be at all. I'd much rather weld and grind than, than cut wood, but it turned out okay. I'm pretty happy overall. It looks, I think, for the most part, factory, and we're really happy to have the fridge off the floor into the cabinet so it's not in the way when we're up and around. So if you have any questions or comments about the build or things I can help you with, leave them in the comments below. I also will put a link to all the parts I used in there so you guys can get the same thing going. So we'll see you guys next time.